Um, hybrid elements is not a problem, it's rather a solution. And it was developed especially for incompressible and almost incompressible materials because um, people often had these problems with um, volumetric locking. They said, okay, yeah, we want to tackle especially this problem. And they then separated the pressure, which I previously said to check so you can see the thing that usually sh shows you the problem is also a good start to develop um, a countermeasure. So the element developers, I think they were quite smart people, said, okay, we separate the pressure state as an um, independent solution variable and um, so introduce this additional degree of freedom and therefore we can almost uh, avoid any type of volumetric locking even for fully incompressible material. The thing is um, that if you use this, of course, this is more computationally expensive. And nowadays, due to, let's say, higher mesh densities, hybrid elements are, so to say, a lender of last resort. So usually, if you have volumetric locking, you go from fully integrated to reduced integration as your first step. Um, then your second step is refining the mesh. And if you still see this problem occurring as your last measure, you switch to hybrid elements. Um, because this is the way to increase the computational cost. Because going from only from fully integrated to reduced integration, you will, um, of course, decrease the accuracy of your results. And then usually you use more elements. So the measure one and two is usually done at the same time. And uh, yeah, if that doesn't help at all, you um, switch to hybrid elements. This is why they were uh, invented, right? Um, last but not least on the list is um, the family of incompatible mode elements. And they can also be combined with um, hybrid elements. They are all first order elements. Um, but they also are extended by an additional degree of freedom um, to improve especially the bending behavior, behavior um, and more so if the bending also includes a contact. And this type of element allows you to again reduce the number of elements used through the thickness to have quite accurate results. So the interesting part is so it's, it's also so to say, your go-to element type because it combines the best out of two worlds, so to say. You, um, you get the bending advantages of second order elements, not as perfect, but almost as good. And um, they're computationally more efficient, close or closer to the uh, first order elements. So you get um, a lot for in your, your investment. So because they're all full integration, you have no hourglassing. And the cool thing is that you can combine it with uh, regular elements in a single mesh. This is good because then you can really use these elements in the regions of interest or the regions where you know, okay, here I might face some problems due to bending and stuff. Um, I've come across um, a paper that talked about the application of incompatible mode elements where you have um, large compressive strains um, and increased um, hydrostatic pressures and they said it might be more likely to have problems than other elements in this case but usually um, yeah I never faced uh, problems like this. Okay, um, TEDs or this is this is going to be a TED talk now. Yeah. I call this TED talk. So tetrahedral elements. Um, usually, you think, okay, yeah, your many standard algorithms in nowadays commercial FEM software they actually use TEDs as the standard meshing element. Um, it's very good that Abacus does not belong to this class um, of FEM software because 
usually hexahedral elements um, provide equivalently accurate solutions at a much lower cost. However, in certain cases, if you have very complex geometries with s sharp edges, like, I don't know, something like, okay, I know this, this occurred by accident, but I don't know, something like this. And then you really know that in this region on top, um, it will be really difficult to use hex elements. And in this case, if you would still use hex elements, they might be severely distorted right from the beginning. And this is critical. So in, if you have some real world applications where you can have these, let's say, sharp, exe, exe, no, sharp edges, um, you can go for tads. Usually you say quads uh, and hex um, have a better convergence rate, yes, and especially because you usually use a lot of TED elements, even in regions where you where maybe one would be sufficient. So especially the automatic meshing algorithms tend to just fill your model with TEDs because they're relatively cheap, but they are usually perform um, less accurate than any quad or hex elements. So this is why in this tutorial we basically only talked about uh, quads and hex element because this is nowadays uh, also the industry standard, especially for the work pieces undergoing severe deformation. Um, however, if you use the automatic mesh generator, which in some cases Abacus can um, already tell you that you can only model a given geometry using TED elements, then I still recommend to go for the C3D10 or the C3D10M. This M is a new, relatively new element. Um, it's, I, I think it stands for modified and this shows a lot of um, advantages compared to any other previous tetrahedral element. So I would say this has quickly become the industry standard. So the, this type of element, the C3DM, uh, especially since nowadays you have so many simulations, uh, including large contact. And then people like to have hard contact. So it's very good that it was especially designed for hard contact. And um, yeah, large plastic deformations and complex evolving contact. So if any, I'd recommend to use uh, this type of tetrahedral element.